president of Jamaica, the president of Majika, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to say thank you to Tansi Azman for his kind words. I have come this time to Japan to meet Japanese businessmen, members and supporters of Jamaica. But before I talk about Majika and Jamaica, I would like to explain that Malaysia has had a change of government. In many countries, changes of government occur regularly. But in Malaysia, this change in government has occurred 61 years after independence. For those 61 years, the country was ruled by one party. Nobody thought that there will be any other party to rule Malaysia. But because of the failures of the previous government, the people of Malaysia wanted to see a change. And the change involves choosing the opposition parties to form the new government. Although many did not expect this to be achieved because the previous government was so powerful, yet on the 9th of May this year, the opposition won the elections with a good majority. And the transition happened without any problems, without any violence. This is a sort of a achievement for a de developing country. Because in many developing countries, changes of government involves violence and even assassinations. But Malaysia was able to achieve this change without any violence quite smoothly. And now a new government has been installed. And of course, people wonder what this new government is all about. What is it, what is the difference between this government and the previous governments? Also, they found that this new government is headed by a man who was a leader in the old government. <laughs> so they believe that there wouldn't be much of a change because the leadership is by the same person. But because of the wrongdoings of the previous government, I left the government, I left the party and decided to join the opposition and to espouse their struggle. Uh, they feel that Malaysia was not democratic enough, that Malaysia was not being ruled according to the laws of the country, that we have forgotten about democracy and the like. In fact, the previous government was known throughout the world not as a democracy, but as a kleptocracy, a government by uh, unlawful people. Now, the job is how to restore the, the government to its previous uh, form. This is very difficult because in the first place, the previous government had borrowed huge sums of money and we do not know how to repay the loans that we, they have raised. Indeed, had they gone on to win in the last election, they would be bor bor borrowing even more. And if they borrow even more, certainly the government, the country would not be able to pay the loans and may become bankrupt. The situation that we inherited from the first government is bad in terms of the finances of the country. We have borrowed 
or the previous government had borrowed more than one trillion ringgit. Of course, if you multiply it by yen, it will be even more. One trillion ringgit is a sum that we have never heard of. Certainly, we have never borrowed that much money. Now, this new government has to repay the debts, and that is going to be a very difficult thing to do. At the same time, the previous government machinery was also spoiled by the previous government. The government machinery is supposed to be neutral, to carry out what is uh, the, the policies of whatever government that is elected. Unfortunately, the administrative machinery was forced to behave as if they were members of the party that ruled this country before. And so their, their posture, their behavior is not conducive towards rebuilding the nation. So we have these two very big uh, problems to face, but fortunately we have been able to mitigate much of the problems by judicious uh, policies and strategies. As a result, recently we were able to, to announce the budget for 2019. To the surprise of everyone, despite our financial constraints, we were able to produce or introduce a budget that is slightly expansionary. We have a deficit of only 3.7%, and we feel we can tackle that deficit. Uh, the plan, the budget for 2019 would be able to re reduce our problems to a certain degree. So despite having problems, we have found ways in order to rebuild the economy of the country and the administration of the country. We believe that we can improve further and we will be able to run the country in a way that would be acceptable not only to its people, but also to foreign people who have interest in Malaysia. Malaysia had always been an open country, a country that believes in freedom, freedom not only of expression, but freedom in terms of uh, doing business. We were not restrictive to the degree that will force foreign investors to avoid coming to Malaysia. Because of that policy, Malaysia has benefited much from foreign direct investments. And now that same policy will be implemented. We will adhere to the belief that foreign direct investment have a role to play in the resuscitation, in the rebuilding of the Malaysian economy. We will be very free. We will be very business friendly. We will be very accessible to businessmen, whether they are domestic or foreign. That is our of our policy. At the same time, we will adhere to the rule of law. The law is there to protect the people from the government and to ensure that people can do business in a proper manner without any constraints, without any attempt to rob the business people of what is due to them. So business people will find that this government will be willing to help the businesses to succeed. I always inform people 
that the reason why the government is business friendly and willing to help the business people is because businesses create wealth. Only business people can create wealth. Government by itself cannot create wealth. So we need to ensure that the businesses succeed, that they make a lot of profits for themselves legitimately. But of course, we know and you know that government regards 26% of your profit as belonging to the government. So for the government, business is good. We don't have to invest money. You invest the money, you make the profits, and we get 26% of your profit. That is good business. <laughs> so you can be assured that this government will be helping you to succeed in your business. If you come to do business in Malaysia, you are our guest, and we will treat you as our guest. We will look into your problems. We will resolve these problems, and we will try, we will try to ensure that all obstacles are removed so that you can do business in Malaysia feeling very comfortable because the government is your friend. This is what we intend to do. We also want to uphold the rule of law. Of course, laws are not always good. Some laws are oppressive and some laws are good for the people, for the business community. But we can assure you that we will do away with oppressive laws and we will enact new laws that will help the private sector do business in Malaysia. You can be sure that your business will be protected by the laws of the country. As soon as you have reached agreement with your partner or you have obtained the permission of the government, you are now protected by the laws of this country. There will be no discrimination against either local investors or foreign investors. We know that when we do this, we stand to benefit. If we are obstructive or oppressive, then there will be no business. And if there are businesses, they will not be successful and the government will not be able to create wealth for the country and to grow and develop the country. As you know, Malaysia before was a poor country when we became independent. We were totally dependent upon the mining of tin and rubber and later on palm oil. But those industries cannot enrich us very much. They will help, but they are not uh, wealth creating as much as investments in manufacturing. That is why we decided to change the country from being uh, an agrarian based country to an industrialized country. And we have, since we have no knowledge about industry, we have to depend upon foreign investors. And because of our policies, foreign investors come from all over the world. I must say that the Japanese responded, responded very early to our policy. Among the first foreign investment that we had in Malaysia was by Panasonic originally known as national. They were willing to invest in Malaysia and today they have many uh, factories and plants in Malaysia producing, producing all kinds of products. Now we need more investments in high-tech and IT-based industries because this will enrich our country further. 
But for this, we need to train our people. We need to have people who are who are educated in this new knowledge. And we are doing just that. So that when you come to invest in Malaysia, in new industries, there will be workers, there will be managers, there will be executives who are familiar with the new industries. So I hope that Jamaica will once again focus on Malaysia. Focus on Malaysia because Malaysia is going to be your profit center. You will benefit much from investing in Malaysia. And when you invest in Malaysia, I promise you the government will always look upon you as a guest who should be treated well by us as the host. That is Malaysia under the new government. It is business friendly and you can be assured that your business in Malaysia will prosper because of the policies of this new government made up of the former opposition parties but very well uh, attached to principles of democracy, freedom and uh, the rule of law. So I thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you and I hope I can answer your questions, if any. I thank you. それでは、マハティル首相へのご質問をお受けしたいと存じます。ご質問終わりの方は挙手をお願いいたします。スタッフの方がマイクをお持ちしますので、ご所属お名前をお伝えの上、ご質問をお願いします。あの、ミツイブスはマレーシアの小島でございます。あの、マーティル首相自らのスピーチをお聞かせいただきありがとうございました。あの、在マレーシアのね、あの、日本商工会社の立場でもありますので、あの、ちょっと会員各社からの特に
Thank you very much, Tun. My name is Masahiko Horie, special advisor to the president of Meiji University in Tokyo. Thank you very much for your very encouraging speech, as always, particularly to the Japanese potential investors. Um, during the first session, Dato Yasmin uh, explained very well the new grand strategy of how to make Malaysian economy with high tech with a lean manufacturing structure. And uh, I hope Majeka and Jamaica will succeed in bringing Malaysian economy into that track. Um, Mr. Kojima did not mention very clearly, but I'd like to speak, touch upon a very delicate problem. And I think I may be with a fear that I may be excommunicated, and this could be the last question to you. <laughs> that is, what we need is a clear-cut policy on foreign workers in Malaysia. And I know your grand design and strategy is trying to limit the number of foreign workers in Malaysia, and that will bring the better, better way. I understand fully, more than 100%. But nonetheless, it is very difficult. It takes time. What the Japanese companies, 1,400 Japanese companies, half of that, 700 are in the manufacturing sector. And they are having the headache every day, day to day, because they don't know how many visas will be provided, will be admitted by the authorities. They ask hundreds of uh, visas, bringing foreign workers into their company, fact factories, but they don't know how many they can get in the black box. This bureaucracy, bureaucratic black, black box is tormenting Japanese companies stationed and operating in Malaysia. So this would be the very bad reputation to the new potential manufacturers coming into Malaysia. So I hope we need clear-cut policy on foreign workers in Malaysia, which emerged when I was ambassador there, 2010. We had one year very exhausting and energy consuming struggle. Jamaica, Majeka, Jaktim, together with the meeting minister and others. After one year, I thought it has been settled down, but again, it re-emerged after six years later, 2016, and today they are troubled by this hindrance. That is one point. From this point of view, I'd like to emphasize the importance of strengthening our ties of small and medium-sized enterprises between Malaysia and Japan. And this is a strong potential. And President Mr. Ishige, together with Ms. Sato, they are endeavoring to find the more Japanese small SMEs to come into Malaysia, hopefully joint venture and so on. From this point of view, I have a small, small proposal to make because Tun, you are the leader of the look east policy. In Japan, every year, a few hundreds of Malaysian students coming into Malaysia, studying in, scattered in 50 different universities in local town everywhere. And my proposal is Maida, cooperating with Jetro, will organize once or twice a year is okay, company visit, factory visit in town like Fukuoka, Okayama, Gifu, Ibaraki, Sendai, or Hokkaido. Everywhere, every, every year, four or five students are coming in. At least 20, 30 students are stationed in these, uh, in these, what shall I say, Japanese big cities with half a million population or 1.5 million population. If these students, Malaysian students, have a good opportunity to visit one or two companies every year organized by Maida and Jetro. This would be a very good asset for them. When they finish their uh, you know, bachelor's degree or postgraduate master's degree and come back to Malaysia, they start working. They can be a very good ambassador to bridge between Japanese SMEs and Malaysian SMEs. And I hope this will be realized. That is a very good gift for students studying in Japan, not only in the university campus,
but come outside and visit two or three selected Japanese SMEs, and that will make their stay in Japan much more fruitful one. Thank you. 外国人労働者とマレーシアから日本への留学生についてのご質問でした。主張かお願いいたします。Well, thank you very much for your comments. Well, Malaysia would like to have Malaysians working in uh, plants、uh, in Malaysia, if possible. But unfortunately, we do not have enough workforce, so we have to allow. Foreigners to come into Malaysia. Unfortunately, when the、uh, foreigners come, there were some who were not、uh, of good character, which、uh, forced us to filter and ensure that they are really workers. Now, what you are talking about is what happened during the period of the last government, the government which was defeated. There was a lot of corruption involved in the employment or bringing in of foreign workers. That is why you had the problem. But now we have a proper policy with regard to foreign workers, and we will not allow any corruption or any buying and selling of workers or smuggling of workers. We want only workers who have jobs in Malaysia to come in. So we need to know how many workers you need, so that we can ensure that if there are not enough Malaysians, then we will allow for foreign workers to come in for a period of time, because obviously foreigners cannot stay in our country forever. They have to stay only within a short period, and then they may have to go back. But you can plan. So that when they have to go back, you will have, you can extend their stay, or you can bring in new workers. We are working on that. It's not been easy, because we have millions of foreign workers coming from Bangladesh, from Thailand, Indonesia, the Philippines, etc. Managing this is a big problem. But give us time, and we will try to ensure. That Japanese companies operating in Malaysia will get their quota of foreign workers. With regard to your suggestion、uh, on the SME, yes, we are interested to see joint ventures between Japanese SME and Malaysian SME. They will have some problem because, unlike the big companies, they are not very familiar with. Foreign investment. We, we will en ensure that if they have problems, we will be able to help them and tackle the problems. Your suggestion that、uh, our students coming here should also work in factories to and、uh, understand the Japanese work ethics.、Uh, that is something that I have always been interested in. In fact,、uh, when we started our national car project, many of the workers who work in the factories that we set up to produce the car were sent to work in Mitsubishi Motors, for example, so that they have some idea of the work ethics of the Japanese. But of course, since、uh, they have,、uh, they are no longer with the Japanese company.、Uh, Part of that、uh, skill or habit that they develop has、uh, sort of disappeared.、Uh, we need to send more students、uh, abroad so that、um, not only will they acquire knowledge, but they will also experience working in Japanese companies, Japanese、uh, plants, together with Japanese workers. Thank you. ありがとうございました。次ご質問ご希望の方。では、そのマイクを持ってください。後ろにはい、お願いいたします。あ、それでは日本語で失礼します。あのえー、ヤンマーの松原と申します。えー、まあ、私今日ちょっと感じましたことは、あのまあ、あのデジタル
エコノミーとかハイテクの分はいやまあそ,その通りなんですけど、えー、農業や漁業というところをも,もう一度マレーシアは考え、まあ、まあ先日ですが方がいいいんじゃないかととちょっと日々感じてます、まあ、私自身、まあ、マレーシアにはあのコタキナバルにバイオ燃料の研究所、えー、とベトナムとインドネシアに農業研究所を持っておりますけれどいろいろと見ますとやはりマレーシアは意外に食料自給率が低い、まあ、日本と同じなんですけど、まあ、穀物をはじめして、まあ、インドネシアもそうですけどそういうことで、まあ、あの食料防衛という意味でもまあ、農業漁業を少し強化すべきではないかと思ってます、まあ、農業にはそのデジタルエコノミーで言われてますような IT テクノロジーとかロボットの農機も日本の技術もございますし、まあ、漁業でも、まあ、あの非常にいい水産資源を持ちながら、まあ、周りの国が大きい船を持ってくるというような事態も見受けられますんでそういう意味でも、まあ、日本のいろんな技術も使っていただいて、まあ、農業、漁業を、まあえー、もう一度、えーえー、ご検討いただけたらというふうに思っています。まあ、ちょっと私の、まあ、感想です。ありがとうございました。Well, thank you very much for this the suggestion.、Uh, although we want to industrialize, to go into manufacturing, we are not forgetting agriculture and fisheries. But our, our ability to improvise and improve agriculture is quite limited. We have research、uh, o r g a n i z a t i o n but we feel that Japanese research in that area can also be applied to Malaysia. We will be interested indeed if we can have access to some Japanese expertise and even if they can. Bring their experts to Malaysia because climate,、uh, climatic、uh, condition is different between Japan and Malaysia. And if they can come and do studies on tropical agriculture, then I think it will help contribute towards greater productivity and also to solve our food security problem. I thank you. Thank you very much. この2つお隣の方。Thank you very much to Dr. Mahathir.、Um, I'm, my name is Raymond Wu. I'm Malaysian. I've、uh, been abroad、uh, for 15 years, 13 of them in Japan, and I'm an alumnus of a Japanese university as well. So、uh, I'll、like、keep this short. I have two short questions. <coughs> my first question is. Uh, well, the US China trade war is in the news, and because of that,、uh, partially because of the, China and Japan h a s been forced perhaps to get together to have a rapprochement, so to speak. And、um, like recently, Prime Minister Abe and、uh, Chairman Xi they announced that、uh, Japan and China will jointly develop something at、like、30 to 50 infrastructure projects abroad in third countries. I'm in the infrastructure advisory field, so it's、uh, An area of interest. So, my question would be what is the、uh, Malaysian government doing、uh, in regard to these mega trends?、Uh, how, uh, how is Malaysia planning to leverage on this reason,、uh, get together between China and Japan in the midst of the US China trade war? Second question is、uh, we are in this,、uh, this seminar is about the digital economy. So, just before you came, the session,、uh, at the session, people were saying the biggest challenge facing the tech industry in Malaysia. Is human resources, particularly the brain drain. I mean,、uh, there are many, many talented Malaysians, multilingual, good income leadership, technical skills. But、uh, with these skills, and a lot of them are products of the Malaysian education system, but with these skills, they will be very popular abroad. They will go to Singapore or even Japan, they earn three to four times more. So,、uh, but it's a vicious cycle. So, uh, we, we, uh, there's a brain drain, then you don't have enough people. And because you don't have enough people, you don't get Uh, important, like、uh, valuable FDI into the tech industry in Malaysia. So, what is the government doing to address that? And I believe it's a kind of an urgent matter because it's a vicious cycle. So, I really appreciate your, 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 your comments, your responses. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, firstly, with regard to the、uh, trade war between the US and China,、uh, of course, one of the effects is.、Uh, 
the cost of Chinese products in America has gone up. Uh, I would think that uh, countries which are manufacturing in China could relocate to other places, including Malaysia, which is not subject to uh, the um, sanctions by America. But we are hoping that they will move to Malaysia. At the same time, of course, we see this trade war as a very negative thing. We hope that uh, they will come around to understanding that trade wars does not solve any problem. It creates a lot of problem and it undermines the economy, not only of the countries concerned, but of the whole world. We are watching very closely what is happening and we are hoping to see opportunities for us uh, during the process of this trade war. Uh, with regard to the education in Malaysia, uh, we know that uh, people who are going to be employed must have certain new knowledge. Uh, we are stressing the teaching of science and mathematics in our schools, and we want our people to be familiar with the new technologies and with IT, uh, artificial uh, intelligence and the like. We are preparing ourselves for that, but at the same time, we already find num a number of Malaysians who have gone into this business and have been successful. They have come up with a lot of programs and, uh, uh, well, uh, products even that uh, are selling worldwide. Thank you. ありがとうございます。え、国士官大学の助川と申します。え、私は長年あの AEC2015年に完成しまして、さらに今AEC2025を目指していますけれども、ASEAN え、歩むべき経済統合の方向性はどうあるべきと考えるかというのをえ、マハディール首相の、え、口からぜひえ、お聞きしたいというのが一つ。もう一つ、最近日本の大学生、え、若者は内向きというふうに、え、言われています。え
But uh, I do hope that uh, uh, ASEAN will soon stabilize itself and begin to work together again. We had uh, uh, a heavy industry project where the, the industries are to be distributed among the five original members of ASEAN. However, uh, only Malaysia and Indonesia managed to implement this industry project because we were allocated uh, the production of fertilizers. And both Malaysia and Indonesia had gas, and therefore we were successful. But the other heavy industries did not take off in the other ASEAN countries. Uh, we are hoping that now that we are 10 countries in all, and uh, we do have a domestic problem, but uh, ASEAN, I think, can overcome uh, the difficulties in their own countries so as to have a proper policy which would uh, uh, involve uh, making full use of the potentials that are inherent in the ASEAN countries. Our resources are very big, but our governance uh, is more focused on domestic rather than regional cooperation. Thank you. ま、えっと、実際に私たちもあの、ま、若い世代からマレーシア人と日本人が仲良く交流できるような機会を様々な形で今推進をしておりまして、えっと、より、マディール氏には、あの、様々な応援をしていただきたいなというふうにも考えております。えっと、こうした若い世代が今マレーシアと日本がこうつながっていく中で、あのより今後重要になっていくこと、また期待をされていることっていうのがございましたら、ぜひ教えていただきたいです。I think exchanges of students are very important. Uh, you get to know each other, and when you graduate you know with whom you can contact. As an example, before Malaysia and Singapore were one country, we all went to the same school, but when we became separate independent countries, we were able to resolve problems within us because we know each other. All we need to do is to phone our schoolmates or university uh, students whom we had developed friendship during uh, the school days, and we can resolve our problems between us. But if we have a more extensive uh, exchange of students, then obviously the ASEAN countries, together with Japan and uh, uh, Korea and China, will be run by people who know each other. This is very important. Because in foreign relations, knowledge of each other is very important because then you can communicate well. As you know, the Americans have this uh, uh, exchange uh, program which involves people from all over the world. Uh, we have, I have myself received two American students to live with me for about three months. And my daughter went to live in America for for some time, and they develop good friendship, and they understand each other better. So I support fully the exchanges of students. Uh, the longer they stay, the better. 
but even short stays are very useful because they get uh, to know each other better, they get to understand the culture, the values of other people within the ASEAN region. This will eventually lead to a much more cohesive ASEAN than presently. Thank you. マーティル首相、一つ一つのご質問に大変丁寧にかつクリアにお答えをいただきありがとうございました。お時間の都合もございまして、大変恐縮でございますけれども、これにて Q&A のセッション終了とさせていただきたいと思います。ここで佐々木会長より今マーティル首相へギフトの贈呈がございます。マーティル首相閣下、佐々木会長、ステージの前へお願いいたします。続きまして、記念の集合写真撮影に参りたいと思います。壇上の皆様、一列にお並びいただき、イクバル副会長、大森副会長、佐藤理事、壇上へお願いいたします。はじめにマハティール首相、安倍外務副大臣、主催者を代表しまして、石毛理事長、佐藤理事、佐々木会長、大森副会長、東橋橋会長、イクバル会長、副会長の皆様でお写真を撮りたいと思います。よろしくお願いいたします。続きまして、マレーシア側、マレーシア日本経済協議会のエグゼクティブメンバーの方々、後ろにお並びいただけますでしょうか。Would you please join the from the council members from Majeka? ありがとうございました。改めまして、大変貴重なスピーチを頂戴いたしました。マハティル首相閣下に拍手をお願いをいたします。ま
マハジリ首相が並びに安倍外務副大臣ご公務のためここでご退場となります。